Hello again everyone. As I've mentioned before, flea markets and antique shops are a good resource for book hunting. Today I went down the dusty trail a bit to Ages Past Antiques, which is my favorite Wisconsin antique shop. I never fail to find interesting books here. The Nook and Cranny Flea Market is next door and I checked that out first. I did see a lot of books, mostly paperbacks, but nothing that struck my fancy. Then I slipped into Ages Past Antiques, which has something for everyone. I soon spotted this fascinating collection for sale. So I got Writers of the Chaparral, Beyond the Rio Grande. This is William McLeod Rain. Got that one. That's a nice book. Seeing Gray, Man of the Forest. Ralph Page, Flame of Forgotten Guns. Take a look at this one. 1930s. Isn't that great? All right, we found Gold by Stuart Edward White. It's a low-grade copy, but I'll take it because that is really hard to find in his books. Another Zane Gray, The Hash Knife Outfit. These are Grosset and Dunlap copies. I'll talk more about those in the regular uh, dialogue in Knights of the Range. Zane Gray, Grosset and Dunlap with the dust jacket. And that is today's haul. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at these books. Cheers. We're back at the cabin. Hang on. It's just what the doctor ordered. All right. So let's go over uh, this book haul that I just did uh, in uh, in town. Um, and I just wanted to go over these quickly. Let's take a look at the Zane Grays first. These are the Grosset and Dunlaps. These are the reprints from the 30s. Knights of the Range. Really nice edition. I've talked about these before. I really like to promote the idea of book hunting in flea markets and antique shops. Man of The Man of the Forest, that's a later edition. It's probably early 40s, earlier mid 40s. And then the Hash Knife Outfit, Zane Gray. Great stuff. All right, really good condition, um, Zane Gray's. And Stuart Edward White, this is a low grade edition. Um, I found it, it was there in that antique shop for $10. And I picked it up because it's, you know, Stuart Edward White is not an author you encounter very often, but when you do, you buy him. So a nice $10 edition, good reading copy. 1913 book, um, just fantastic. Glad to add that to the collection. And let's talk about some of the other Western writers um, that I picked up because I picked up three others. So Beyond the Rio Grande, the Rio Grande by... William McLeod Rain, and this is a great, great author. I've talked about him before. I've talked about Zane Gray before. I have an episode also about Stuart Edward White, and William McLeod Rain is an author I've mentioned, I think, several times before. So if you're not familiar with his westerns, check him out. He's pretty good. He was a contemporary uh, and competitor with Zane Gray. I prefer Zane Gray, but top-notch stuff. You know, a little tougher edge to this stuff. Um, some of it is pretty routine, but William McLeod Rain was a really good Western author. Um, here's a really fun one, Flame of Forgotten Guns by Ralph Page. A range hog meets his match in a girl and a quick-eyed tenderfoot. Look at the cover on this. Isn't that a fantastic cover? Um, really fun stuff. This is uh, early 1930s. Let's take a look at the copyright date on this. Uh, so this is 39, 1939 from Caxton House. So this was a, uh, a real find to get something from 39 with a nice dust jacket. That uh, that antique dealer, by the way, that I bought from, I've been there before. I was there last year and I bought some books there which I talked about last year. Um, I'll give you information on that place in a moment. And then finally, Riders of the Chaparral by George B. Rodney. And let's take a look at the date on this one. This one is 35. And this is a Grosset and Dunlop. Another great cover artwork on this. Look at this stuff. Um, I don't know anything about Ralph Page or George B. Rodney. I haven't looked them up yet. so um, And I haven't read their books before. So when I picked these up, I was excited because I'll get to read somebody new. There were a lot of writers of Westerns back then. Um, so really fun material. Now let's take a look at these three. I went back and they had a stack of these. You'll see it in the video. 
the X bar the X bar X boys this was a series for young readers in the 1930s and I went back and I bought three of them the X bar X boys in the Rockies all right these are adventure novels for young readers from the 30s and then I bought the X bar X boys at Grizzly Pass and I've finally picked up the X bar X boys in Smoky Valley all right so fun material um, I really like reading books um, for young readers from this period they're really enthusiastic uh, I think this is the one that has you know this other one um, the X bar X boys lost in the Rockies uh, I'll have a close-up of this but take a look at the um, the cover artwork and the interior illustration with the bear attacking the boys um, this is really fun um, in fact this morning by the way today is July 3rd 2021 so you get an idea these episodes are all being filmed in advance I have no idea when this will be posted I've been filming up here since May 5th and I don't know how many episodes I'll create from everything I've filmed but this morning out back here uh, at nine o'clock this morning we had a black bear out there um, I'm going to do an episode about some of the wildlife critters out here. Um, this intersection here is, uh, I call it an intersection. This is where the uh, the bears come out. It's a uh, power line trail. So the deer and the bear, they come out of the National Forest. They hit the lake road and they follow the power lines around. So in the last week, we've had the bear, the deer, the uh, wolves, and the bobcat all showed up on my camera. Uh, right here at the end of my driveway. So... We're pretty isolated, that's why we have guns. Uh, and we, I'm not a hunter, we just, you know, you can discharge your firearm into the underbrush to scare the wildlife away. Generally works, although the bear's pretty clever because he knows what's going on and uh, he shows up by sneaking in uh, from the back swamp and then he comes in close to the road, but lately he's been avoiding the road because the bear knows that there's a lot of people here. The, the wolves and the uh, bobcat I, we probably won't see again maybe late in the summer. Um, after the 4th of July things get crazy in the Northwoods so more people more noise. So anyways I got a kick out of this this uh, illustration here because of the bear and um, here they are lost in the Rockies. Of course I'm in northern Wisconsin near the Michigan border so a little different here but I'm, I'm going to read this tonight actually I'm going to start reading this tonight. So a good book haul at the antique shop um, in the flea market and always fun to stop into an antique shop when you're on the road to see what kind of treasures you're going to find because this is really good stuff. Until next time, keep reading, keep fishing. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys the address of the antique shop where I had that book haul today. So it's Ages Past Antiques and they are located at 8714 Highway 47, Manaqua, Wisconsin. Now the reason that's important is because they're nowhere near downtown Manaqua. Manaqua is the island city, so you have to leave the town center and travel a bit. It's actually next to Woodruff, right at the border between the two towns. So just um, Google it if you're going there, ages past antiques. The flea market is in the big barns next to that every weekend throughout the summer. Um, so if you're interested in ages past antiques, that that is 8714 Highway 47, Monaco, Wisconsin. Happy book hunting. All right, good morning. So I found out a little more information about the uh, this series, the X-Bar X-Boys. This is the X-Bar X-Boys at Grizzly Pass. Um, this was this series was created by the Edward Stratemeyer Syndicate, the same group that created the Hardy Boys and Tom Swift. Two great, long-lasting series for young readers, um, Nancy Drew, etc. So, <clears throat> really fun, rich history behind the X Bar X Boys. There were twenty-one of these written and published, so it was a fairly short-lived series. Um, I have but the three that I just picked up, as you saw, uh, and the X-Bar X-Boys Lost in the Rockies, the X-Bar X-Boys in, uh, in Smoky Valley, and the X-Bar X-Boys at Grizzly Pass. Um, there, uh, there is a great website devoted to this series. It's the X-Bar X-Boys.com. 
check out that website. You'll get a lot of information about the individual authors, the series, the background behind it, individual um, notes relating to the books. Very useful. That's the type of thing I love to find on the internet when I see information related to classic American literature, especially series books such as this, which are almost forgotten. I'm really fortunate to have found these three in good condition. They had some others there at that antique shop. I may go back later in the summer, and if they still have some, I may buy some more um, because I do collect and, and really love reading reading these books. Um, you know, this this type of stuff is fun. So I started reading X, the X Bar X Boys Lost in the Rockies last night. Really fun adventure for young readers. A book that I would pass on to young readers and say, "Hey, read this." I'll probably keep these in the cabin. Um, and I'm, again, I may go get some more. Uh, she had, at that antique shop, she had on us maybe six or seven others out of the 21. I'm going to go back and look. Um, so in the meantime, I just wanted to give you that update. So I took it upon myself to do a little more research into the two Western authors that I picked up at the antique shop. And the first one was um, Riders of the Chaparral by George P. Rodney. George P. Rodney apparently was from Delaware or is considered a Delaware writer. He wrote numerous westerns that uh, are fairly well received. I, you know, I'm not seeing negative reviews on these by people that have read them. Um, I've looked through this. This looks to be a pretty literate, traditional, good old-fashioned odor. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading this after I finish reading the X Bar X Boys books. I'm going to read those first. I really love the cover on this, Writers of the Chaparral. Uh, and then I didn't find much information about Ralph Page, an author. This is one of the off-titles, Caxton House Books, which was Flame of Forgotten Guns. I love the title. Uh, interesting cover. Great old-fashioned western from 1939. I don't know anything about this author, so perhaps some future research will go into this. And if I find out any interesting information, uh, I'll share it with you. But these are the two other westerns that I picked up at the antique shop. Take a look at that. Um, fun, fun material. Great old cover artwork on these. Again, the George P. Rodney looked to be the better of the two. Uh, Caxton House was a, uh, I think, a thrift publisher of some type or not as well-known publisher from 1939 that put out this in many other books. Don't know much about Caxton House publishing either from that era, so perhaps I'll research that and let you know if it's interesting. You know, probably there's nothing there. But um, there were so many publishers and authors in the 30s and 40s that when you find this stuff, you're really, it's open to, um, it's open to any possibility, really, because you can find stuff that's really good, and you can find stuff that's really bad. Uh, this one looks to be so-so. I'm not... I'm not confident that this will be the best Western I've ever read. This one actually, like I said, this looks to be pretty good. So anyways, more to come. <laughs>